what do you think of the uh, event for over 35s? I think it's a great initiative because obviously when you get 35, a lot of their, uh, the, the geezers have got like family commitments, they've got the wives in their ear rolls moaning about them going to play every Sunday morning, week in, week out. So with this initiative, uh, the football replay, I think you can, uh, all over the country, you've got 45 centres where you can turn up at uh, 2, 4 or 6 o'clock on a, a Sunday afternoon. You can turn up, uh, it was a five-a-side team, turn up on your own. So you haven't got to commit yourself every Sunday. Also, what I think is great is on a five-a-side pitch, whereas when you get a 35, trust me, and I've played a few charity games just lately, that pitch seems like a uh, massive polo pitch when you get to 35+. plus. And you could turn up and play for a 11-a-side team. If you're playing at right back or left back, you might only touch the ball like 12 times in the whole like 90 minutes. Whereas here, you've got an hour, five-a-side pitch, you can get yourself more involved, get more touches, keep your fitness levels up, bring your family with you, you know, your kids, they can come, you know, say two, four or six o'clock. You can come every other weekend if you want to. You haven't got to commit yourself to, like, doing DIY and, like, you know, do your home base, get your bonus points in for your misses. Um, I think, and the other good thing about it as well is, you, uh, you won't pick up as many injuries. And obviously you've played in a few of the Masters events. Is it good to catch up with all your old teammates? Um, when you first started off playing the Masters events, it's all sort of laughing and joke before the game, and yeah, good to see you again, we just have a little kick about. As soon as the whistle goes, then it's like World War III, because uh, your competitive instinct takes over. Um, I used to tell my boys, uh, they play rugby, to be disciplined, not to retaliate, and every time they send me play, say, you make me laugh, it's you who causes all the trouble. Because you get a bit frustrated, because you can't do what you used to be able to do at like 27, 28, and especially if there's some younger ones running around, which they do these days, because the Masters is over 35s, that is old stages like me who are 40, 45 plus, and you're getting some of them with 35 and still playing football, um, and still training regularly, being like Billy Wiz, and you try and stop them, but then you can't, so you think, right, the only way I can stop you is um, maybe not legal, so um, you end up picking up a few injuries. So um, it's, it's good fun, but it's gone on to a bit more serious level now. And obviously you're an Arsenal legend. They not a legend, no, it's going a bit too so. far. Well, a lot of people say uh, cult hero. Perhaps. Cult, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cult hero. Cult. And, uh, obviously Arsenal finished third in the season, trophyless again this season, but uh, what did you think of the, the campaign? Um, I thought it was just to be expected. I don't think they overachieved or underachieved. I said at the beginning of the season that they'd be third because I thought that Chelsea and Manchester United were physically and mentally uh, a lot stronger than what we were. Um, Arsenal's policy of going with the sort of um, the technically gifted, mobile, smaller midfield players actually hasn't worked because you need some physical presence to win the Premier League. So uh, I think we ended up exactly where we were. And, and obviously, Cesc Fabregas has decided because we haven't won anything for five years that he wants to go and win trophies and it's nothing about money, it's about ambition and he's seen Barcelona win La Liga, win obviously Champions League the year before, um, sees all his mates there, he's grown up in the academy, you know, the Messi's, the Iniesta's, uh, the Xavi's, the Busquets's, winning trophies, he'll be with them this summer, they'll be all in zero, saying, you know, come and play for us. Um, I think as well with Cesc, um, it's a lot less physical in La Liga, um, he's seen two horrific injuries in the last three years with Eduardo at Birmingham, obviously with the uh, Martin Taylor tackle and um, then you've got Aaron Ramsey with the uh, Ryan Shawcross tackle uh, and I think he sees for himself that uh, it'll, get easier, it'll get an easier ride in the Liga. So who would you like to see Arsenal bring in for next season? Is there someone that you particularly highlight? Yeah, they, they need a, a little ginger winger, tight shorts, long throw, come on for the last like 10-15 minutes, that's exactly what we've been missing. Um, no, you probably you need a, a goalkeeper with a bit of physical pre presence on Nora. Fabianski and Munia, decent enough but they're number two goalkeepers. Uh, another centre half, um, probably someone in the Roger Johnson mould at uh, um, Birmingham. Combative centre midfield player uh, with a physical presence and a, a winning mentality in the Scott Parker type mould. Now whether he would go and buy Scott Parker because obviously he's 30 now is uh, open to conjecture. Yaya Torre would be a, a perfect fit if he wanted to come and, and play in the centre midfield because he has got physical presence. And we need a striker, and it looks like Schmack's going to sign from Bordeaux, so he's the penalty box striker. A lot of people make Spain or Brazil favourites, but do you think England's combative style could lead them to do well at this World Cup? I do, and I think obviously in South Africa it's their winter, so um, every time obviously we've played in, um, in Asia or in South America, I don't think the weather's been uh, helpful to the way that we like to play. We've got a fantastic manager who uh, knows his stuff, tactically he's very, very good. Uh, he's instilled some discipline in the players. Nobody's bigger than England. If you see him now, there's not many pulling out of injuries or the training sessions they've met up this week. Everybody's at the training sessions apart from obviously the Chelsea players. Um, if Wayne Rooney stays fit, then we've got every chance. I've, I've said that we'll get to the semis. And then when you get to the semi finals, anything can happen. It's an individual brilliance, a dodgy refereeing decision, you know, a bit of luck here or a mistake. 
Um, and if you look at our players, everybody's worried about the injuries. I don't see it that way. They haven't played a full season, so they're going to be. They can't say that they're fatigued or tired. So you've got people like Ashley Cole, Rio Ferdinand, uh, Glenn Johnson. Uh, you know, three of the back four who've probably played half a season. You know, each player. Then you've got Steven Gerrard, who I think has been playing fairly within himself for the season uh, when he's had at Liverpool. Not that he's not been trying, but he's not been his uh, industrious, dynamic self. Um, so he's going to be nice and fresh. Then you've got uh, Frank Lampard, who's probably having the best um, period of his career at the moment, the last half of the season at Chelsea, so his form's great. Then you've got Aaron Lennon, who hasn't played at all this season, who's going to be nice and fresh on the right-hand side. There's not been many times where an England uh, team have had four players in the top six goal scorers in the Premier League. So I'm one of these ones whose uh, glass is always half full. So obviously, it sounds you like you're optimistic, but if I had to put you on the spot and say England's were starting tomorrow, World Cup was kicking off, would you say they'd reach the semi-final, final, or win it? I would say, they'd, as I said earlier, they'd reach the semi-final, and then when you get there, anything can happen. You know, and I just hope it doesn't go to penalties, because I don't fancy some penalties. When Frank Lampard says that he changed his mind in the FA Cup final, and you think he's one of your best penalty takers. I said we should have Matt Letizia as the 23rd man. Only missed one penalty in his career. So there's going to be four, or, there's going to be probably three or four players who are in the World Cup squad, right, who don't play. There'll be water carriers. So have Matt Letizia set on the bench, and he can come on, and you know you're going to get one of your five penalties. Right?